This is a sign of wild hogs. They get in and they root up stuff. And it can be a little bit bad. Just a little bit. See, what happens is nearby there are lots of hunters surrounding me. During the winter time, they all shoot everything that they can. And by spring, there's nothing left to shoot. So when the gun season ends, they buy female hogs that are pregnant. And they release them when hunting season is over. And you can hunt wild hogs all year round. So these hogs, these big female hogs appear every spring. They're not there in the winter, but in spring I get one female hog here. Now I've got one right now. I know who put it out here, but anyway. What they do is they give birth to a lot of baby piglets and that gives them something to shoot because they like live targets. That gives them something to shoot during the summertime, which it's legal to shoot hogs when there's no hunting season. You can shoot hogs. So they shoot them and they reproduce very quickly and um, they root up your land a lot. So the um, way to get rid of them is very simple. They're afraid of electricity like everything else. So I've got an electric fence that I really use for a lot of stuff. It's a uh, Gallagher, which is my favorite brand. I've had Parmac and others. Gallagher is worth its weight in gold because now this one's several, several years old. I'm careful with it and I really like it. I've been charging it today because it's been very rainy for weeks and I didn't do any charging. So I'm gonna take it to the fence over there that I put up in about 10 minutes. You stick the little plastic posts in the ground, make sure that the wire doesn't touch any vegetation, any sticks or anything but the posts. And otherwise, you won't have a shock on it. And there's no risk of electricity shocking and killing anything because it only pulses every few seconds and puts one shock out. But I've been shocked by it a lot. So here's how it works. You push that, this T-rod in the ground. Put your hands. Push, stick it in the ground with your hands as far as you can put it. And you set this right here. You got your red wire, which is of course your hot wire. That's your hot wire. And you attach the hot wire. And see, it's off. There's a, lev thing, a lever right here that sh I need to keep this straight. Sorry about that. This right here is off. And this hasn't fully charged yet because when it fully charges, it turns green. There, see, like that. Green. Anyway, so then it needs to still charge because it's been like weeks without any sun good. Um, I had it under a shade tree too. Under a shade tree. Anyway, so that's wildlife mode where it pulses really, really fast. See the little wildlife. And there's pigs too. That actually looks like a warthog. But anyway, and then there's a the livestock where it pulses really slow. That's because it's... it's um easy to keep an animal um, in when it's well fed and it knows about the fence. Once it knows about the fence, it's not even going to get near the fence. <sighs> but when it doesn't know about the fence, you've got to let it know right quick because it can crawl under here before it even gets a chance to shock on any electric fence. Oh, anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this closer to here. Like that. Where I can reach it. I'm going to set the, clip that onto the fence because that's your hot wire, red hot, to the fence. And then I'm going to put the green wire on the ground line. See how easy that is? Green wire on the ground line. Now I'm simply going to turn it on to wildlife mode. See that? Now that whole line, that whole line of wire was very cheap, less than 20 bucks. And it goes looks like nearly 4,000 feet 
anyway, I got a lot of wire on this one. Um, this is poly wire. And these little posts were less than $2 each. These are less than $2 each. They're just plastic. And uh, I'll show you the best thing I've got. You got to know if it's working. Now, if the fence falls off and hits the ground, it's not going to work. If the wire's hitting the ground or if it's hitting any kind of weeds, it's not going to work. You don't want that. You want to make sure it zaps them. Anyway, so what's going to happen tonight is the pig's going to wake up. It's going to want to come over here to get in my garden and all that stuff. And it's going to touch its nose to that fence because it's never been shot before. And it's going to say, I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm going back to the woods. So I stick this ground rod in here so it's making contact. Then I look at these and if there's any red lighting up, I know it works. Touch it. Okay. See the red? Got to be at the right angle. It's it's quite sunny. Okay, I got to go check the fence. It's not going all the way up to the top. So that means that there's obviously since it's been put up all day today, something came across it before I hooked up the charger and probably knocked it off the posts. So I will check that, and I will show you in a minute. Okay, here's some more hog damage. See, there's the rest of the pasture. And this right here is how it's been rototilled. It looks like you took a rototiller to it and tilled it all up. See, the hogs are natural tillers. When they get done with that, if I don't get a whole lot of rain in the flood, all kinds of different kinds of plants will grow there that don't grow there. Because a lot of plants like cultivated soil. They like disturbed ground. Okay, let me go ahead and try to find where the fence is. It's got something wrong. Okay, it's right up here. I see it. One of these dead trees dropped this limb on the fence. And when the wind blows, it touches the fence like that. And it's causing some trouble. What happens when the wind blows? It grounds out the fence and stops the shock. All the shock goes down through that stick into the ground and it can't shock anything else. It's done shocking. Okay, that's the only one I could find. So now I'll test the fence. And you can test the fence anywhere along the line. I could have brought the tester with me, but I wanted to turn the fence off before I went and checked it. Pretty sure I did. Maybe I, no, I didn't turn it off. I'm not gonna touch it and say, yeah, that was my problem. So I walked the whole line and I know that that was it. So that's how simple that is. Electric fencing is really easy. You don't need any tools, really. Just a post, the poly wire, the energizer, a tester. You gotta have a tester for sure. And a um, ground rod. And you don't need the, the elaborate ground rods. If you're just doing something like this, just get a push-in T-shaped one. If you got rocky soil, you don't use a ground rod. If you have rocky soil, then you have to use a bare wire that goes or just another poly strand that isn't hooked up to anything and is not um, touching anything. Don't let it touch the ground. Just attach another wire like this and don't attach it to the energizer or that wire. And when the animal touches that wire and that wire, the animal becomes the ground. As a matter of fact, it really shocks, but it takes twice as much wire. Instead of using one strand, if I had rocky ground, I'd have to use two. One being the ground, the ground wire and one being the hot wire. But since I have a ground rod, I don't need to. I just use one ground rod. So that's how that works. You can use an electric fence anywhere. But uh, remember this, it's easier to keep an animal out than in. If an animal wants in, what, what I mean is, if an animal wants to get out of a pen and you got them an electric fence, it will get out because you just start thinking, you know, if you were the animal. 
I'm hungry. I gotta get out of here. Is the shock worth it? Well, heck yeah, it's worth it. Go take the shock. But if it's something like a free animal, it can't get out. I can't. I mean, it can't get in because it doesn't want to get shocked. So, um, well, I can't explain that. The animal has more of a reason to get out than to get in. But once they're used to the hot wire and they know how it feels, then they'll stay in pretty good. Just one strand. My goats, though, on the other hand, they're different. It takes three strands to keep them in. They'll go under it because they're very smart, but they won't go near it here. But I mean, if they're pinned up, if I want to keep them out of the garden, this is perfect. They see that, they stay away. Um, I use this thing around the beehive. They use it around the garden, whatever, whenever I need it. And then once I use it, I don't have to um, hook up the energizer anymore. Let's leave it there. They're scared of this wire after that. You want to get a visible wire. Okay. Let's see how she works now. Let's go over here. Probably works real good. Oops. See how that that fence post is uh oops my fingers. That fence post is crooked. They don't want that. Okay, straighten up the fence post. I didn't dare touch that wire, I just touched the post. You'd know if I touched the wire, I couldn't help it. I would jump and I would yell. Okay, now we're gonna see what happens. You're watching those. You can hear it tapping. It's all the way up. It goes all the way up to 8,000 volts. All right, it's good as it gets. Good as it gets on the on the tester. Can't get better than that. So it's ready for the night. Now the hog's gonna get zapped by that when he comes through and he's gonna turn around and run the other way. And he's not gonna ever come back again. As long as that wire's up. He's gonna be scared of it, even if I don't have a charger there. And I'll know he came because the fence post will be pushed over or something. I'll have to fix him. And he won't be back. You'll remember this wire too. Nobody likes being shocked, and hogs are smart. But if you're gonna keep them in a pen and you only have one wire around them, like I said, the hog's gonna get out. He's gonna say, man, I want freedom. I don't care if it shocks me. But when he's already free, he doesn't care. He's not gonna try to get in here. I know this. I've been using this thing for years. So that works. Works real good. All right, um, that's it.